There are a lot of questions about coronavirus, and we're here to help you get those answers. Wood TV 8 and our community partner, Metro Health, are addressing your biggest concerns. Michelle DeSelms is here now with what you need to know. Yeah, you guys, the questions just keep coming in. So, of course, thank you to everybody who has sent them to us. And, of course, we really appreciate Metro Health for taking time during this busy, busy period to answer some of them. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Ronald Grifka is here now with us tonight. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. And I want to start out tonight with new information regarding ibuprofen and the coronavirus. So the World Health Organization recommends you don't don't take it to treat the symptoms. Is Metro following that same guideline? Uh, well, thank you for having me here today. You know, the ibuprofen concern about circulating online stems from a tweet from the French health minister warning that the, this anti-inflammatory drug Motrin could worsen the effects of the coronavirus on people who have some underlying conditions. Now, the World Health Organization is looking into it further, but I will say that no uh, health authorities right now have noted any relationship between ibuprofen and doing worse with coronavirus. Um, this is a new virus. We are just learning about it now, and there's certainly a lot to learn about it. But right now, we don't have any formal recommendations other than good medicine. You should practice what you're referring your family doctor uh, thinks you should do. Okay, okay, great for that. All right, let's go now to the viewer questions. The first one is about the seriousness of this virus. Renee says, when we had the Ebola and H1N1 outbreak, businesses didn't shut down, grocery store shelves weren't being cleared out, et cetera. So what is different about coronavirus that's causing all these extremes? So that's a great question on everybody's mind. You know, this virus seems to be different uh, from the other two viruses in that we feel that it can be spread from person to person uh, before one of the people develops symptoms. So that makes it a little more problematic. So we're asking people to practice what we call social distancing, trying to stay more than six feet away from each other and trying to avoid large crowds so that we can uh, certainly keep each other from exposing each other before we might have the illness and not having any symptoms. Okay, so this next one is a two-parter. Is this virus airborne and can you catch it again if you've already had it? Um, it certainly is. As far as we know, it's spread through respiratory droplets. And the best way to get exposed to respiratory droplet is sitting next to someone who may be coughing or sneezing. Uh, but as far as we know, once you have COVID-19, if you have a healthy immune system, you should develop antibodies, and those antibodies should protect you if you get exposed to the virus again and fight off the infection. So hopefully you should not get it a second time. All right, some good news there. A lot of people asking about earlier illnesses. Hillary wants to know, could the rise in pneumonia and mm -hmm. unknown viruses that happened in December and January be connected with what we're facing now? Um, a good question. Certainly, the viruses that we saw in illnesses in December and January were due to garden variety, uh, influenza, and other uh, viruses and occasional bacteria. We know that the coronavirus really was seen first in China in early December and really not outside China until January. So it's pretty unlikely that the illness that we saw around the holidays were related to coronavirus. Okay, all right. Here's one now about cleaning. Linda says, we know that we need to wash our hands for 20 seconds to clean them. So why can't we do that with surfaces? Could warm, soapy water be effective instead of those hard to find cleaners? Well, then the cleaners are getting harder to find. You are yeah. correct. But when you use soap and water, uh, the soap breaks down the oils on your hands. Then you rinse the germs down the drain uh, with the soap and oil. Uh, with hard surfaces, that's harder to do because there's the friction on your hands that helps break down the oils and then rinses the germs down the drain. With hard surfaces, we need the wipes such as Lysol wipes or delete bleach solution because we can't get the friction on these doorknobs and light, surf light switches and other hard surfaces. Okay, good to know there. Stephen Murrow wants to know about travel. He says three family members are flying out of state this weekend. Any advice about the risk and precautions to take? Um, the best recommendation would be not to travel. Now, obviously, this would be an extenuating circumstance. If you do have to travel, certainly wash your hands as much as possible. Again, use social distancing, trying to stay as far away from other people as you can and avoid large crowds if possible. But again, if you cannot travel, that certainly at this point looks to be uh, the best recommendation. But again, the social distancing should help minimize the spread of the illness and prevent you from catching it also. Okay, good. We have a question now from Flora who has concerns about takeout food and the virus lying around for a while on the styrofoam and paper containers. Of course, a lot of people doing takeout with restaurants being closed. Well, sure, many restaurants have implemented screening procedures for all their staff employees, just as all businesses have also. Um, also, restaurants are going to follow all the local uh, food codes that they have to require to stay open. 
So from that perspective, we should be safe. If you pick up, take out food, make sure you wash your hands before and after you get it. Again, just to make sure if there are any viruses that you were exposed to, you can help wash those down the drain. Okay, thank you. Finally, Judy is wondering how we will know when the coronavirus threat has passed and will it be safe to resume normal activities. A lot of people wondering that. I wish I had a perfect answer to that question. To be honest with you, at this point, we currently don't know this. We hope it will be just for a few weeks. But we do know that state and local departments are continuing to monitor the situation. They're reporting new strains. And hopefully they'll start reporting that the number of uh, new inf infections are starting to decrease. At that point, we'll know all that we've enacted with the social distancing and people keeping people out of work um, and all the other regulations and restrictions will have uh, helped us out. But at this point, it's still a bit of an unknown question. Yeah, we know you guys are busy. Dr. Grifka, how's it going tonight at Metro Hospital? Thank you. Um, just with all their hospitals working together to try to take care of the patients the best we can. You know, a lot of thanks to the healthcare workers. They're you know under some very uh, extenuating circumstances. They're doing a great job, and uh, we're trying to keep everybody healthy. And the good news is, we're trying to. Keep, if you're not mildly ill, you don't need to come to the emergency room for us to be mildly ill. Just stay home. All right, good. Well, thanks for everything tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank and of you. course, keep submitting your questions to us. You can email us at community at woodtv.com or you can post right there on the Wood TV Facebook page. The experts from Metro Hospital will join us live every day at 530 to answer more questions.